<laughs> yeah, I can. What we're good with those. All right. Cool. What do you say? What do you say? Are we live, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. J? All right. Getting there. Slowly but surely. That's all right. You got the whole rod racks ready? Yeah, we're good to go. And we are live. We are live. It's, uh, we're back. Spooky? It's a little spooky. You know? <laughs> what is it? Uh, spooktacular, I think, is what my sister calls it. Yeah, it's for uh, spooky surf builds. That's it. She, uh, you know, she always wins the art of the month type thing because yeah. she's got some little kids and they do the whole deal and spooktacular. Spooktacular. I, I try it. to be the cool uncle and give them things they shouldn't have and teach them things All they the shouldn't candy. know. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Why Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it for sure. I had the cool uncle growing up, so yeah, absolutely. But. Uh, Awesome. So, October 27th, it's the week of Halloween. We've got to turn the clock back, though. We do, unfortunately. We miss those uh, late summer afternoons. Those are a thing of the past now. I know. It's a shame. We usually, we usually do a little thing called Front Nine Friday. For those that know, it's uh, nine holes of golf on Friday after work. And I know everybody doesn't believe in daylight savings. This guy does. I agree with you. Oh, well. It's all good. All right, so we are going to talk about surf builds, as you said. Yep. What are we going to walk us through a little? We got, we got some cool stuff on the table here. Yep. I don't think in, how many shows are we on now? 64, 63, 184? Anyway, we've never done a true surf build That's show. That's right. We talked about a lot of saltwater stuff. We've done a, a saltwater, maybe two shows on saltwater. I can't remember. Yep. But, uh, but regardless... Um, and you know, we, we set this up because I know you guys took a trip we did. to Stewart, and we've hinted at that before, right, yep. Yep. on one of the past shows, but Absolutely. you guys took a, a, you know, a trip to Stewart. Um, Building up surf rock. Exactly. We got the 10-footer here. It's a two-piece. We're going to talk about this on the show tonight. We're even going to do a rod recipe, but you can see we've got Steve there. He's working on a fish. Uh, we've got a coot on the beach. We caught some sharks on the beach. Uh, but we did a few little things, you know, whether it's wind wrap, whether it's cork tape. Uh, we did some shrink tubing. We did a lot of different things on a surf build yeah. that you saw there that we want to walk through tonight because I got to play, come in here to the penthouse and play around a little. You know, mm -hmm. we, we worked on, like I said, worked on some cork tape, tried some new handles, uh, real seats, weighted butts. We're going to cover all of that tonight. Yep. As well as guide spacing too. I don't know if you mentioned that, but we're going to cover the handles, the grips, the accessories, the real seats, the blanks. We've got a couple new blanks to talk about. Nice. That are kind of geared towards surf fishing. Yep. A little more so like off the pier kind of kind of fishing. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a versatile surf style. Yep. So I know, and a couple of the rods that we took down there were exactly that. You know, for those that do only surf fishing, you know, granted, uh, MHX. Uh, has some that are one and two piece, nine and ten footers, and then of course, uh, you know, other companies like American Tackle. I think they've got to like a twelve footer. Possibly. So something like that that is geared strictly for the sand. We do have some blanks coming out that we're going to talk about tonight that you could do both. You know, if you want to fish on the jetty, if you want to fish off a pier, if you want to throw a lure mm -hmm. and not just you know chuck out a pyramid sinker or one of those spider weights and just sit. You can do that too. Exactly. I mean, you know, who who doesn't like a little uh, like a little cocktail on the sand while you wait for a bite every now and then? There you go. I'm into that. I'm into <laughs> that for sure. All right, so I think we've got that stuff out of the way. We're gonna do some demos. Of course, your credit card is ready to go. I know you've been working on it. It is the end of the month. There's still some room on it, so we are gonna give some stuff away tonight. Um, ask your questions. Get it shared up if you guys wish. Hopefully, everybody's there. I've uh, been in the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop this week, but uh, I think, are we about ready to get this thing kicked off? I think so. All right. We'll probably uh, probably get it kicked off and then go right into a demo. I know we got some housekeeping things, and you're going to tell us about a brand new product for sure. So um, absolutely, guys, put those questions in there while we're getting everything queued up. And uh, what do you think? Are we ready to hit this? I think so. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Almost, almost. No? Maybe not? Sweet. 
So we're going to work on what in the world is going on. There it is. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Oh, Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Flex it on the I beach. Did. He had that. He had that uh, surf bod, getting the tan on, slinging a big weight on the beach. So, cool. Yeah, he was actually he was actually flexing that uh, that ten footer. So, for those that are into the surf game, um, that blank was uh, the ten footer. It's a one two zero seven F, and that's the two piecer. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that tonight. But Hunter is going to introduce a new product. Tell us about the Gator Graphite Surf Blanks. Yeah, so these are completely new to the, the Gator series. This okay. is actually a graphite version. Okay. We have three models, okay. all nine foot. Mm -hmm. They range, you know, anywhere from a 12 to 25. We have a 15 to 30. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the 20 to 40, which is the nine power. You know, that's a, it's a stout blank. For yeah, sure. yeah, ab absolutely. You know, and, the, and they are great for, you know, we have them line rated like that. So if you want to throw a lure, I know down in, well, where we fished in Stewart and Jensen mm -hmm. Beach, a lot of the guys throw like a flare hawk for snook around bridges um, and, you know, jetties and stuff like that. Yep. Same in Sebastian Inlet that's actually not too far from us, you yep. know, maybe an hour and a half here from the mud hole building. You can run down there and, and fish at night uh, with whether you're fishing live bait or you can throw big lures for snook and having a nine footer that can handle something like that, 12 to 25, 15 to 30, yep. even up, like you said. The 20 to 40 is a pretty beefy blank there. And they are all moderate fast. So yep. whether you're using live bait or whether you are lobbing a giant lure, uh, it's going to be great for it. Exactly. Yep. So. so we're definitely really excited about these. This is actually, you know, these three models are are kind of a, um, a throwback. These models have been around for a little while, okay. um, several years. We reintroduced them. Um, you know, Todd and I worked on these together and cool. really got them pinpointed down. Cool. They're great blanks and they're perfect for that application specific. The guys that want to throw them, like you said, off the, the jetties, the piers for those big snugs. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. And that, you know, that's not to say that you can't take it out to the sand for and sure. throw a, you know, a two to four ounce sinker and, and do something like that. Um, <clears throat> if you want something that, as I had mentioned, it is a very versatile, you know, from sand to pier type of a blank even we had we were playing with a prototype down there uh, and it was cool because we had it on the skiff to throw a lure around the bridge down there one of the bridges in Stewart and then of course we actually had it out on the sand there you know you saw Steve mm -hmm. uh, he was out there chucking a two ounce weight around and uh, it it was great you yeah. know it, it was something that if you're only gonna get one and you can use a one-piece nine-footer yep that's the so, one to get. I'm sure the guys, if they have not yet, throwing a link in the uh, chat for you guys. The, the part number is ISSW, and we go from a 1087, 1088, and 1089. That's the model numbers. Sweet. Yep. That'll work. All right, so as everybody's getting their questions in, I want to talk about the flyer that's coming out, right? So for those that are members of the Mudhole Live Rod Building Workshop community, you guys get a lot of stuff early that not everybody gets, yep. but you still need to be getting the flyer and the catalog. If you're not, that's something you need to get signed up for. The fall flyer is out. This is something that comes to your door for free, and we've got articles, we've got new products. Uh, we have taken some of the rod recipes you've seen online put them into print, and then of course we've got tips and tricks in there. You know, you see articles from Todd, articles from us that talk about, you know, how-tos, and then of course you've got uh, any, any of the equipment that you might want to get to put into your workshop there, as well as, you know, check out anything from classes uh, to application-specific builds, any of that stuff. 
run over to mudhole.com slash catalog. You got to get it because I don't know if you guys saw the cover, but we work hard on this. Very stuff. cool. This is a little headless horseman, our man Guff Blogman, <laughs> who's in the war room right now. Imagine being in South Florida in August. It was probably 111 degrees. He's in a headless horseman suit with the shark rod, got a 50 wide there. And uh, of course, Hoffma did some really, really cool editing there. There's a few, there's a few little uh, kind of trinkets in, in this catalog. And uh, of course, some Easter eggs, as we call them on the cover there, that you might want to look out for. Really, you know, some funny little cool things that might, uh, might jump out at you there. For sure. it's, it's like a Where's Waldo of cool stuff <laughs> on that cover. So it's, it's pretty neat. We, uh, that's something that comes out of our, our marketing room in the Thunderdome. We're really, really proud of those. So uh, the guys do a ton of work putting out cool catalog covers. Hopefully you guys enjoy those. So, um, so yeah. yeah. So I know we have that one. We might have one more coming out before the end of the year. Oh, we absolutely uh, hint, do. Hint, hint. Yep. So if you did not... Um, well, obviously, there's still time to sign up to get this one, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. And, and then, if uh, you, anytime, anytime you want to put in the order comments, you know, if you want somebody to draw something on the box, or if you need a new catalog, uh, maybe it got trashed, maybe it got lost, maybe just put a note in there, please send me the current flyer, please send me the latest catalog. We'll be happy to put it in that box, order number, we'll put it in, and it's gone. So. Don't worry about asking for another catalog or a new flyer. We're happy to put it in there. So, yeah. There you go. And we do have, that's always kind of the Halloween edition, right? And we do have a, a, a holiday kind of, you know, sometimes it's Christmassy. Sometimes it's, you know, kind of as we get closer to December, uh, there will be one. And uh, I'm not going to show it because I can't let the cat out of the bag like that. Exactly. You know, it, it, it is going to feature one of the uh, one of the highlights from the trip that we went down south, and uh, it's a blast. I think old Saint Nick even makes an appearance. Uh oh. So we'll see. But <laughs> all right, what else we got? A little more housekeeping stuff to take care I of. I think one more for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we've had some people ask about this, and. Drone fishing has been kind of a thing, right? Yes, you know, if, sure. you, if you go on YouTube and check out drone fishing, there's a lot of hits on it. And uh, the whole marketing team was like, I think we can do this. And, you know, you'll see Jay, who is the certified head man for the drone deal. He's the pilot, knows it all. Uh, we had him on a drone. And then we had our other guy here in the department that had another drone. So we're running two drones. So like the drone had a drone, <laughs> which was pretty cool. So we had Nick and Jay out there on the sand, the rest of the marketing team. And we actually built a rod specifically to fly baits off the sand and try to catch fish. And it was pretty wild. I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was pretty cool. I think, I think we'll show a little teaser here because we do have an episode coming okay. for Mud Hole TV. Perfect. What do you think, guys? I think we ought to run that. On this episode of Mud Hole TV, the Mud Hole crew takes flight off of Jensen Beach, Florida sending their drone deep over the Atlantic to drop off bait and catch fish not usually accessible from the sand. With sharks in mind, they specifically design rods from MHX to handle the demands of catching big game from the shore. Will these experimental builds be able to keep up with the monsters that lurk just off the coast? So that drops October 30th. That's pretty cool. That is Friday. So when you're at the office, 
Rolls about 11, 30, 12 o'clock. You start to get that feeling like you're checking out for the day. Run over and you'll need to check out the new drone fishing episode because it's cool. We've got rod building. We've got drone fishing. We walk through what we did for that rod to build it for that. And then, of course, we also walk through some drone safety stuff, how we set it up because the last thing I wanted to do was, you know, be, be the man that brings the drone down because I didn't listen to Jay when he was like, hey, the rig's got to be this long, it's got to be this, you got to have a dropper loop, you got to have all that. So it took a lot of planning to put that together. We didn't just, you know, run out and put a drone on Hunter's credit card and start hanging stuff off of it and flying it out. So uh, a lot of work went into it. Hopefully you guys will learn a little something. We learned as we went through it, but it was an absolute blast. So dropping this Friday Mud Hole TV episode. Uh, what you can do is you can run over to YouTube and you can check out the Mud Hole Custom Tackle YouTube channel. So what that is, is youtube.com slash Mud Hole Custom Tackle. Pretty easy to find. Uh, I want to say there's probably, what, 25,000 subscribers there? So it comes up pretty quick. If you go into YouTube and just uh, search Mud Hole Custom Tackle or just search Mud Hole TV because we do have an episode from last year that we went offshore and we also did kind of a Lake Ida slam where we caught clown knife fish, uh, peacock bass and, and stuff like that. So very cool. That is it. Um, for those, we want to appreciate everybody coming over, watching tonight. I know we've probably got a pretty good audience. Uh, we got a special friend of the show that's joining tonight. Uh, that's Israel Palat coming out of the Bronx, our uh, manager downstairs said to tell you blackfish up so that's cool there you go you know love it when the guys join maybe first time watchers somebody that's uh you know into fishing and whatnot so uh we love we love taking care of the customers so all right we need to talk about building a surf rod we're talking 101 surf rod 101 what yeah we got? well surf rods are cool because they technically use a lot of the same components as a normal freshwater or inshore, yeah. they're just bigger. Sure. We're talking most of the time bigger reel seats. Mm -hmm. We're talking much larger guides, especially in size. A lot of these go up to, you know, size 30 and 40 guides that we'll start with. Without a doubt. So a lot different than our normal, you know, flipping stick that we're using a size six on or micro guides. Sure. Right? Um, and of course, too, the, the length of these blanks, much longer. Right. We want to get that surf or, you know, whether we're fishing with, with live bait mm -hmm. or something on the bottom, right? We're using uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, sometimes up to 13 and 14 foot rods some guys yeah. use, right? And that's the sole purpose for that is to get that bait out as far as we can. Sure. Because guys are fishing off the beach a lot of times. They're fishing off of piers, jetties. You know, we're, we're not in a boat. We're not out where we can, you know, easily obtain or reach these fish. Yeah, just put the motor down and just move over. No, no you're going to have to reach out and cast touch to it, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, that all depends on the water depth, too. Some guys are casting a lot farther than others, so that's where the length really comes into play. But, um, you know, and, and a lot of these are one-piece, too. Sure. Some are two-piece, but, you know, a lot of the old-school guys that, that still fish off the beach, they love that one-piece, right? Right. So, um, and of course, a lot of the nine footers are still in one piece. Mm -hmm. A lot of the blanks over nine foot up to 10, 11, 12 have gone to two piece. Right? For sure. And that's not only for travel, but shipping. Let's shipping, be for sure. You know, trying to get it to you uh, to get, you know, a 12 or a 13 or a 10 footer even, you know, shipped out. It's, it's tough. Yeah, it, it really is for is. sure. But as far as our MHX surf blanks go, you know, let's talk a little tech. First of all, these blanks, we use a, a 45 million modulus graphite Okay. with, uh, I believe it's our ultra resin system. Yep. Right. Absolutely. And um, of course, like you said, you know, that is something that in the surf rod blank category, it's the same tournament torre, torre excuse me, yep. that we use in an MB 874. Exactly. You know, the same frog rod, the same swim jig rod, uh, the same SJ-842 that you love that everybody says, wow, it's very sensitive, it's lightweight, it's incredibly strong. Yep. We're utilizing that same carbon or that same graphite in a surf rod. So it's, it's not something that maybe, you know, if you were growing up as a kid and your dad handed you a surf rod and you're like, what is this thing made out of? Mm -hmm. You know, with giant outer diameters and, and really, really heavyweight stuff, 
I mean, you're really just, you know, you have the same tournament torre that's in, like I said, your frog rod, your flipping stick, your any of that stuff that you're used to using, that you're confident in using. Um, it does have a gloss coat on it. It does. So really that's that doesn't do a whole lot except it makes it look a little bit different. Yep. Um, but it's got a gloss coat on it, the MHX does. And then of course, like you said, that ultra resin is just something that you can build. I mean, I, I wanna say even even the guys that went surf fishing with us in, in South Florida were like, oh, this is a 10 footer. Mm -hmm. This doesn't weigh a thing. Yep. And you could take and dump a two ounce, like it's pretty much as far as you wanna throw it. Yeah, without absolutely. A doubt. So. Yep, those materials together, the, um, the uh, 45 million modulus yep. and the ultra resin system allow us to keep those diameters small, keep mm -hmm. the weight down as compared to blanks that, you know, from 10, 20 years ago. These blanks have come a long way, just like everything else, sure. and allow us to, you know, especially when you're fishing a 10, 11 foot rod, you know, that, that weight can really be a struggle, in, you know, unless you are putting into a stand and just leaving it alone. But yep. if you are, you know, casting and especially with a couple ounces of lead, Oh, yeah. That can wear you out pretty quick. Well, and I think, you know, the great part about that is we are going to dive into how to maybe offset some weight. You know, we've got a couple different weighted butt caps here. Uh, we're going to talk about handle length. We'll talk about guides, of course, too. But, yeah, you know, having not only the technology that MHX has in it, yep. of course, the, the feral situation that most people are afraid of in a two-piece the, the feral technology now is such, you know, some people will call it slim feral technology. Some call it, you know, it's a reinforced feral, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like you have this big extended piece on there or there's a metal feral or anything like that. It honestly is just built into the rod blank like nothing changes. Right. And honestly, the only reason you can tell it's a two-piece sometimes is when you're standing there holding it and you see a feral wrap. Right. That's honestly one of the few telltales that you can look and go like, oh, well, that's, that's the 10-footer because I can see the ferrule wrap before that guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I handed you a, a two-piece and a one-piece nine-foot, you know, surf rod and you cast them side by side. No. You could not tell the no. difference. Not even, not even the old, you know, one of these deals. The old <laughs> wiggle thing, you know, you couldn't even tell. Dang. Couldn't even tell. So, yep. Awesome. All right. So, walk us through a little bit on... We talked about line ratings and things on the other, on the other blank, mm -hmm. right? So this one is the 1207F-2, right? So there are some things to consider because some people ask the question, you know, well, am I looking at like line rating? Am I looking at weight? What, what am I looking at here? Yeah. So for example, on this 10 footer, um, it will give you a line rating, as, as most will, but it also gives you a weight range. Right. And I think the weight range, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I think the weight range for some of this is a lot more important. Right? Absolutely. I agree 100%. Because, you know, line ratings are great to an extent, but the lure rating is really where you can dial in to what power blank that you need. Sure. You know, if you're throwing two to three ounces of lead along with your, your, your bait or your cut bait, whatever it might be, you can find a blank that's a, you know, a two to four or a three to five, whatever it may mm -hmm. be, and you can dial in exactly which blank that you need sure. to fit what you're throwing. Because right. otherwise, you know, I would say most of the people that, that surf fish are probably using along the same line, um, you know, as far as poundage goes. Sure. It can vary a little bit, right? Yeah. But really, you can use that lure range to dial in what blank you need. Yeah, and, and I think it, I haven't done a whole lot of surf fishing, not a ton, but I had been to the location that we were going, and I do understand, you know, how rough or not rough it can get there. Of course, in August, most of the time, it's one of two things. It's a hurricane or it's a <laughs> mirror. And, you know, you could be miserable either way, right? Mm -hmm. It can be blowing so hard you can't do anything, or it can be so flat that you can barely breathe. So <clears throat> picking this blank that I did is that two to four, right? So... Mm -hmm. I knew that we could possibly run into a bigger snook, a shark, you know, some of that stuff mm -hmm. that I might need a blank that is the seven power, right? That, that I might be able to lean on them a little bit. But honestly, what I was most worried about, and not worried, but what I was keying in on was the fact that, okay, do I want to be able to throw a two ounce sinker 
or a six ounce sinker and yeah. and why you know so i knew we were geared up for you know snook and some other stuff in other areas and of course mm. i knew we were gonna have the drone with the big meat stick out there so when we built this this was going to be more like small sharks whether you're going to run into you know snook pompano small kudas yep. or even you know we were catching stuff like uh you know, uh, like small whiting and things like that, mm. which you're not worried about them fighting per se. You're just worried about throwing a two ounce lead out there. And of course, you know, we had the rig set up with two ounce and then a, a liter. And I think most of the time we're only running anywhere from 12 to 20 pound, you know, liter mm. down to a size one O or, or so hook with cut squid or, uh, you know, shrimp or something like that. So we're not expecting to hook big daddy out there exactly. right so <clears throat> that's really not the not the point there but um i think what we need to do now we're going to work into the first demo let's talk about since you were talking about length and weight and all this stuff let's let's kind of ease into the handle setup we're going to talk about crb weighted fighted crb weighted fighting butts um also going to touch on one of the fighting butts we've got that you can adjust it so what that allows you to do is depending on, uh, you know, if you're throwing lures, if you're just throwing a sinker, if, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what you're doing there and uh, kind of how to put the weighted butt yeah. and get it balanced Well, I'm going to grab this, this rod here, which I think we're probably going to show a few times on the show, right? Yep, for sure. But I'm going to grab it because it's got a few examples of what a lot of surf rods out there kind of look like, especially right. in the butt section here where we have our cork tape. I'll make sure I get that on camera there. Yep. We have the, of course, from the uh, the bottom of the reel seat back, we have the cork tape all the way down to our fighting butt, mm -hmm. which we have um, the CRB aluminum fighting butt. And that actually serves a couple purposes. Uh, for one, it, it makes it a little more comfortable when you are fighting a fish or, um, you know, have this stuck down in the sand, whatever it might, might be. It also really helps um, to balance this rod out. You know, when you're dealing with a nine, 10 foot rod, you need a little bit of extra weight. Most of the time the reels are big, right? Yeah. But we always need a little bit of weight at the very end of our butt to, uh, to kind of balance it out, right? For sure, it's a little bit like when we, when we put a little bit of weight in like a fighting, or in a flipping stick, yep. you know, for the fighting butt instead of just running your standard wind butt or your cork butt or something like that. Exactly. And of course we did, uh, I guess you did, finish this off with an EVA grip on the front, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, a lot of this does come down to personal preference. Oh, yeah. Do you like the cork tape? Um, you know, you could have done a smaller section of cork tape here and just left this entire area like a split grip area. Right. You know, surf rods actually allow you to be really flexible in how your handle is. Yeah. You know, you could, do, uh, you could do the shrink wrap, like um, I think we showed that a little bit earlier maybe. Yeah. You can also do the, the win tape yeah. which is really cool absolutely and of course you can do this as your foregrip your rear grip you can determine different sections it's really up to you how you want to uh, create the handle of your surf rod yep and as you see most of the time they will be just like your uh, your rod blank is going to be longer your handle is too because sure. you are making long cast you want to be able to you know use two hands when you're casting this so a little bit different setup a little bit longer handle length Yep. But it allows you to be, uh, you know, a little more versatile with it. Absolutely. You know, there is not really a, because we get the question a lot of, well, how long do you make this, right? And it's, the issue is, is there's not really a right or wrong answer. It's going to be kind of something that, like you said, it's going to be personal preference. Now, no, I would not take this handle and slide it down to match uh, an SJ-42, you know, which is just, you know, maybe your shaky head rod or right. something, or your inshore, you know, trout rod. But I would kind of figure out what feels comfortable in kind of, you know, this move here, because you are going to be doing that a lot, mm -hmm. and maybe even, you know, kind of one of these moves, you know, exactly. kind of that, you know, you're kind of maybe the David Hasselhoff of surf fishing, <laughs> you know, giving them the old, the old eye on the beach. So just something here that's comfortable because when you are fighting a fish, it can be a little awkward of like, well, do I, is it go here? Does it do this? So what you don't want is, you know, you don't want it to be like that and you don't exactly. want it to be down here. Um, now I will say, give me that extra section there. 
So again, this is Oops. this is the ten footer. This is this is the two piecer. So, and we we get this a lot with the whole balancing situation, right? And it's a little, probably still a little out in the tip heavy, maybe. But depending on where you want this, for me this is okay mm -hmm. because I'm not, you know, I'm not out there really working a lure all that much. And even if I was for it to be a little tip heavy, if you're throwing a nine footer and you're on uh, jetty rocks, if you're on a pier, you know, you have plenty of room between the rocks and the water. You're not standing on the bow of a bass boat right. trying to work a jerk bait and your rod tips all in the water. Mm -hmm. You know, you do have plenty of room that if you do have some kind of downward look there, you can throw that flare hawk out and work it, mm -hmm. you know, or you can throw a swim bait or live bait, whatever like that. So I wouldn't be so worried that like, oh, is the tip up or the tip down or whatever. Somewhere in here, that feels pretty comfortable. And then of course, I'm gonna want to be able to really, really throw it. Exactly. And this one will absolutely sling it. So we were throwing, actually we did, we threw kind of the whole range. We did a two ounce all the way up to a four ounce. And it was, mainly because of surf conditions. Yeah. You know, we threw a two ounce out and we noticed that it was drifting a little bit. The wind had kicked up, the tide had started moving pretty quick. So we just upped it a little bit. Yeah. And we have one of those, you know, weight sliders that you can just clip in a three ounce, throw it out. If it's not working, clip in a four, throw it out, you know. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that is kind of what you touched on of length. I want to say, because I measured this for a guy the other day, from the back of the butt to the back of the reel seat, 17 inches. Um, again, it just felt right. This is a size 18. What's the part number on that guy? That is an ACLR. That's okay. the Comfort Lock uh, aluminum reel seat. Yep, and you notice the fighting butt matches the reel seat. Exactly. Got to get a little matchy-matchy every now and then. And then, of course, we have the LZRs out here. And we're going to walk through that guide spacing in a little bit. Yep. But those are the polished LZRs. With the foregrip here, you can do a couple different things. There is a vertical jigging foregrip. That's this one. It's just kind of slimmer line, and it's got like a little bulge here that works. Uh, you can also use the ST, which is a straight taper grip. It's just got a little bit of taper. It's not overly big, and it's just something that kind of keeps it lightweight. And of course, <clears throat> for me, the reason why that we didn't use, you know, EVA or something back here or cork is because this section never gets touched. Right. I mean, you grab the fighting butt, you throw it to the horizon, and then you just write in the rod holder, and you wait. Yep. So the last thing I want to do is put a nice piece of cork back here, or EVA, and then it's hard to get in out of the holder. You start chipping cork, you start doing that stuff. So the other good thing is the, uh, the cork tape or the wind wrap allows you to dry fit this. Mm -hmm. So you've got your blank, it's in two pieces, Let's say you know you're going to use, you stole my butt there. Yeah. You got that guy. You're going to use that. You can dry fit that. We're going to show you how to do that in a second. And then, of course, you dry fit your reel seat, put a reel in it, and you can get pretty close to, okay, well, that, that feels about right. And then you have complete freedom to put wind wrap, shrink tape, cork tape on there, and you're done. You don't have to go, well, the EVA grip I bought is only exactly. this long, and now we have to do that. Now, granted, if you've got an RBS Pro power wrapper, you can put it in there and you can turn it down. But that's why we're using cork tape or wind wrap or something like that. Yeah. So um, let me walk you through this guy here real quick. Do we have any questions coming in? What do you think? I want to scroll around there. Let me get some tape. Uh, I got it. I can oh, you're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, knock it out. Man, yeah. my man. Well, this was, you know, it's really easy. I mean, you look at this, okay, super easy to install, right? Uh -huh. But there is one trick I like to make sure that people do when they are installing this cap. Because as you can see, when you do put this over the end of your rod blank, it doesn't go very far. No. It goes enough, but not very far. Sure. So one thing I like to do is make sure I like actually using the the half inch. Okay. And what I do is, I'm actually going to put this tape, typically, I would go maybe up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Half inch, inch, three quarters, whatever it may be. Okay. For this one, 
I do it right at the very end. Okay. Flush, right at the very end of your rod blank. All right. All right, and then of course I'm gonna do a full tape barber. Spot you there? Yeah, I'm just okay. gonna do a couple turns just to show, and then um, I've got one down here that's ready to go. All right. Martha Stewart in here. So if you guys can see that real quick, the tape is not overlapping the edge and it isn't, I didn't go, you know, too far in at all. It is right flush on the edge, right? Cool. So cooking show style, I'm going to pull out one I've already done. All right. Perfect. Just like this. Gotcha. So this is one I did earlier. And as you can see, push the edge a little bit. So we slightly overlapped on the end. But for the most part, it is completely flush right at the end of that rod blank. And so when you go to put this cap on, there is no movement at all, right? It's just, it's on there. It doesn't go forward anymore. It doesn't go to side to side much at all. It's flush. If you happen to put that tape out too far and you put this on like this, for instance, I got a lot of movement in there. Yeah, yeah it doesn't seat properly. And when you go to put our pro paste and, and seat this on here with the, uh, the, the glue, you're not gonna have a very good connection at all. Sure. So you wanna make sure when this cap does go on, it has very little movement at all. Mm -hmm. That's a big tip, because not to say this happened to me, but I've heard a, a horror story of someone where um, they didn't glue this up properly, they, they pushed this tape arbor too far off on the butt section, or the, the very end of the butt, and it actually wiggled loose over time. Is so. that like asking for a friend? Is that kind of uh, what you're possibly. saying? Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. I know you wouldn't have done that. No, no. We know that. We I, know. I might have. But you know, that's, <laughs> that's uh, you know, I don't mind sharing my uh, mishaps every once in a while if it'll help people at home. So. I, I was going to say, I think you and I both have had our fair share of mishaps. It happens. You learn from it and uh, we share tips, you know. For sure. Now, another great tip about that is you can always add more weight. For sure. You can always add more weight. Now, especially with a surf rod blank, you do have a little bit of room in the butt section of these. Um, you know, they're not overly large, but they are large enough that if you do have, whether it's small egg sinkers, whether you're a bass guy and you've got some tungsten weights at home for flipping or something, you still can add weight into that butt you can arbor it, you can put it in, and then of course you can come in with this and that'll be your final piece. Yep. So not only are these got a little bit of weight to them, but they look sharp. I'm talking sharp. Absolutely. So, and then of course on this one, you're the, being the part number guru that you are. <laughs> so this is what we call a hosel. A hosel. A hosel. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's just like a magnum winding check. Okay, you can also use uh, some of the winding checks like the AAWC or, or any of those if you want a color because they do come in a number of different colors. Mm -hmm. But what I did is put the winding check on first because if you do the cork tape, nothing wants to slide over this cork tape. Mm -hmm. This is rubberized cork onto, you know, with an adhesive back you are not gonna get anything that's gonna slide down this. So pay attention to what winding check you wanna use because you will want to put it on from this side, whether it's metal, whether it's one of these hosels. And that, do you got a part number on this guy? I think it's HRV, I think. Is it? Okay. I'm not, I'm is, not it, is there one that's that like one. VMC or something? Maybe it's VWC. Maybe it's VWC. Anyway. It's one of those two. It's one of those two. <laughs> the guys in the war room, they'll get it figured out. So, what? <laughs> yeah. So, you're just going to want to put it on from this side. And what it will allow you to do is, I'm going to show you how to wrap this in a second, because we're going to work from butt to tip as we usually do. So, this hosel will work on, you've got your cork tape, and then of course you can slide it back down here and do that. And then of course the good thing is, is this real seat's aluminum. The fighting butts aluminum it's great in salt water so don't worry about that so yeah awesome cool 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 and then we do have the other option yes. if you wanted to right which is the adjustable uh from crb the adjustable that. fighting butt yep which this can be used in surf and also can be used in freshwater rods inshore rods mm -hmm. really cool allows you to kind of not adjust on the fly necessarily but 
you can take a screwdriver to the back and yeah. adjust the weight if needed. Yep. Um, super cool little thing there. Um, yeah, I think you can actually take it. I was monkeying with it. I should have brought, I don't have it. I, I had a, uh, a penny mm. and a penny yep. would actually take that off and then there's little discs, little weighted discs. So you back that out and then when you back that out, the little cap comes off. You can add a disc, remove a disc, put it back in, and you keep going. So this is one of the few that will allow you to uh, do it on the fly if you've got something handy. So you could probably use like the bend of a hook too. You know, probably could try to because it's not it's not that difficult, but it does have a little like O-ring and stuff in there that holds it pretty tight. Um, I had loosened this one earlier. Hang on. All right. Yeah, I got it. So uh, these little discs. Yep. So you've got these little weighted discs like this, and they just stack on. And they have like a little, they have a little indent there, so they fit kind of inside the next one. You know, so you can stack them, and then uh, technically you can put it back on like that. Always, I always add a little kind of a little quarter turn or a little eighth of a turn there yeah, on that for just sure. because, you know, the last thing you want to do is be like, man, this rod all of a sudden feels really tip heavy. <laughs> and then you look back here and you're like, has anybody seen those discs? Yeah. So don't want to do that. Cool. What do you say? You want to do a couple questions? There's some good yeah. ones up there, actually. Yeah, Let's do uh, Patrick Flanagan. He's got a great question. All right. What is the best way to protect your grips from rod holders over time? Is there a preferred method or material that works best? So Chris hit on this earlier. The cork tape is a very durable material. Mm -hmm. um, and also you'll notice on a lot of surf rods, and you kind of hinted this too, a lot of the surf rod grips, whether it's cork tape, wind wrap tape, or just very slim EVA grips, that's for a reason. And you mentioned, you know, you don't want a large OD grip to where you're going in and out of the rod holder over and over. Right. That's just going to cause um, damage to your grips. Um, and also, if you really want the most durable, I would opt for cork tape over EVA, to be honest with you. Yep. I think cork tape over um, you know, the course of five, ten years even is going to hold up way more than EVA would. Sure. And you know, it, it, it does have a very strong adhesive back to it. That doesn't mean that you can't get it off and replace it. So you can come in here and cut it and pull it off and, and add some new on there. But I would have, a, I feel like I'd have a hard time tearing that up. For sure. You know, um, you could also come in and use heat shrink. Yep. I don't know if we've got, we do have a rod back there that's got the, uh, the heat shrink on it. And it again careful. is one of those that. Let's go right there. Perfect. Got a little Rasta vibe in it. So that one right there, and what kind of heat shrink is this again? This is flocked, 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 flocked heat shrink. Okay. And you know, the, the great thing about heat shrink is, say you do have cork tape on your rod already, you use it for several years, you've really worn it out. Mm -hmm. If you didn't want to take the cork tape off and worry about the hassle, yeah. you could just come in with shrink tape right over top of it. Sure, sure, cool. So yeah, I mean, if, you know, if your grips end up getting uh, you know, really flocked up, you can just put some new Flocked heat shrink tubing over there. You've been right? waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, not too bad. Cool. We're, we're children here, everybody. I know. <laughs> All right, so anyway, that is the different types. This is the blue. So, this comes in, do you know how many colors that this guy comes in? Ooh, put me on the spot. I'd say uh -huh. at least five or six. Yeah. So, this is the uh, flocked heat shrink tubing, right? Um, and it does have kind of an interesting texture to it. It's, it's not quite, it, it's more grippy, I would say. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to, I don't know, to kind of tell you guys what this feels like. But it is grippy, whereas this regular heat shrink tubing, although it is grippy, it is a little slicker. Uh, but this is great for, you know, kind of adding protection to, you know, the butt section or if you've got, you know, we've done it on a rod repair show where, you know, if you've got an offshore build and it's just, something's just, you know, torn to all hell, you can use heat shrink tubing over it and it actually clean it up pretty quick. Yep. So the heat shrink is, is not only good for 
builds right out of the gate, but it's also good for the for the repair aspect. But yeah, it's you know any of these like really really slim grips would be great because in and out of that rod holder on the beach, it's just asking for asking yep. for trouble. So. Uh, Ralph, what's the difference between a surf rod and a pier rod? Um, is there a rod that would work for both? Um, I would say, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of blanks out there. The ones that we mentioned earlier, the new CRB uh, Gator Graphite blanks, could e use it, you know, definitely for a surf or a pier rod. Um, I really, I mean, it's, it's hard to really designate one or the other because there's a lot of blanks out there that could be used for both. Yeah, I would, <clears throat> I would gear up to what I was fishing for, really. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of locations where you can catch a tarpon off the pier, or if you just want to catch, like, sheep's head or whiting or, or something like that, I, I would kind of gear the rod to what you were going to be doing. And, and either one, you know, you could do off the sand or off the jetty um, but or a pier. But uh, I, would, I would definitely key in more so on what you were going to be doing <clears throat> and how you were going to be fishing. If you're ever going to be throwing lures, I would probably sort of err on the side of a little bit shorter. I wouldn't go a 12, 11, or even maybe a 10 footer. If, if you're going to try to throw a lure, you know, the nine for me seemed very light and nimble in hand where you could, you could truly work a lure with a nine footer for me, whereas you start to get out into that 10 footer and it just gets a little, a little more awkward, honestly. So, uh, Robert, who draws on the boxes? They do great work. So Robert, we, uh, we've got a lot more artists here than you would think. <laughs> so I would say we have, how many guys in packing do we have downstairs? I would say at least two or three, maybe more. That draw. Yeah, that I would draw. say maybe, maybe more that actually actively draw. So depending on what you get, depending on how many orders are going out, because if those guys downstairs are slammed and getting orders out, they actually come upstairs to us in the marketing room, and we've got, <clears throat> we got Hoffma, we got Guff, we got Taylor. Those three guys are the ones that really kick out some cool, cool stuff. So uh, we try to have a little fun with them. Sometimes uh, I know we take a little, uh, you know, a little artist liberties with them, you know, try to be funny, and, and it seems like everybody loves them. But yeah, those are the guys that guys and girls that do it. Some do it in shipping, some do it up in the marketing room. So it's uh, we all enjoy doing it. So we kind of spread it around a little. Yeah. So, yep. Let's get John's question, and then we'll uh, move on to the giveaway. Yep. Uh, John Ross, what is the best way to determine what size reel seat to use for your surf rod? Um, is it strictly based on the size reel you're using, or is there more to look at when deciding what to use? Uh, John, you know, your reel size is going to have a big <clears throat> determining factor. I would also say the butt diameter on your blank is yep. also going to be a, a big determining factor. You will notice, um, I would say most of the MHX blanks aren't too terribly large. No. But, um, you know, as a whole, surf blanks are, are a lot larger than just normal freshwater rods. For sure. You know, you might have some that are up to maybe an inch or more at the butt. Yeah. So you have to make sure the inside diameter of your reel seat can accommodate that large butt section. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it really depends. Some guys have to go up to, say, a 22, a 24, sometimes a 26 size reel seat yeah. to accommodate those butt sections. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a mix. I mean, for example, the, the reel that is on this, this is a 5,000 Shimano. So it's got probably 300, I think. So we're running 20 pound braid on this. So probably close to 300 yards, 20 pound braid on a 5,000, I believe. Sorry, I don't mean to try to get you, you there. I don't remember what the capacity is on this, but so pretty good capacity, 20 pound braid. This is a size 18. It's a mix because the blank diameter and the foot of the reel. So I always try to err on the smallest reel seat I can get away with. So yeah, could we have put a 20 on here or a 22? Oh yeah, we absolutely could. But would this reel foot be good in a 20 or a 22? Not always. You know, some, some reel seats are better across the board. I know specifically this 
real seat from CRB will hold a larger kind of array of real seat of real sizes than some. Uh, whether it's a 5,000, this is a 40, so just to give you an idea, this is a 5,000 Shimano. This is a 4,500 Daiwa BG. I don't know how well, I don't wanna get you there, but I'll yeah. go to Nick. So I don't know how well you can tell that on camera. This reel is considerably larger than this reel. Um, this reel has 40 pound braid on it and it holds over 300 yards of 40 pound braid. Whereas this has got 20 pound braid, not nearly the capacity. And of course this reel is considerably heavier. Now, I would run something like a size 20 on this seat if I was using a standard graphite seat. It will still fit in this 18 pretty good. I would go to a 20 still though, but you know, you'll see this reel um, highlighted in the, uh, in the beach fishing episode that we will do for Mudhole TV because we were using this with a drone because it has 300 plus yards with 40 pound test. You do not know what you were going to get. So uh, we were using actually a gator blank. We were using the 1550. And if you look at the specs on that 1550, because it is not 100% graphite, right? The right. 1550 mm -hmm. has, you know, so what it is, the blank diameters are larger. So not only did we need to have a, you know, a 20 or a 22 because of the diameter, mm -hmm. we also needed it to handle, you know, one of these saltwater series reels like a Daiwa BG with, you know, what is this? 340 yards of 40? That's oh. what's on here. So there's a little more that goes into it than just, you know, oh, well, that real seat looks good on that. So, yep. Very good. Awesome. All right. Um, I think you need to give something away. Okay. Let's do it. So our first giveaway of the day, of the night, yep. is we're going to give away one of the CRB weighted fighting butts and also... Because yep. that's just not enough, right? No. We got to get a little more. Yep. We're going to do, for I think the first time ever, a mud hole swag pack. Nice. So we're going to throw some, what? We got some hats, maybe some stickers. Some... I'm, I'm just going to go down there and sort we're going to do hats, maybe, you know, whether it's bottle openers or koozies or shirts or, I don't know. Okay. But we are going to do a swag pack and uh, we're just going to put some stuff in there. It's going to be, it's just going to be a cool grab bag. That's all, that's all there is to it. So uh, we are going to send weighted fighting butt and uh, probably maybe some cool swag. Cool. And that's going to go to Zach Bailey from Facebook. Nice. Coming out of Facebook. Cool. Third place. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, we'll do, uh, do a little mud hole, maybe a little MHX swag in there. Cool. We've got both. So There you go. We'll, get, we'll have fun with it. It's your money. So Why not? We might as well party with it. Cool. All right. So as we work our way up this, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the butt section, right? So <clears throat> I think everybody's been liking the rod recipes. For sure. You know, it, it was kind of a, it was kind of a group brain child, right? So back when everything got wild in the spring with COVID and, and all these kinds of things, we, we started looking around and we were like, man, we have so many cool builds whether you've done one or I've done one or, or somebody like Victor Joseph or, or uh, uh, Van Zandt or whatever. We had so many cool rod builds laying around, right? So we were like, well, some people walk in and they go, well, what's all on that? And you're like, well, I don't really know because it was this or it was a prototype of that or whatever. So we said, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to standardize these. We're going to do rod recipes. And we wanted to bring you guys a rod recipe for the surf build that we used. It's this one right here that you can see. Uh, again, this is the 10 foot, it's the seven power. It's the two piecer coming out of MHX surf series. And <clears throat> we wanna make sure everybody has all the right part numbers and all that stuff. So when we come back from this rod recipe, I'm gonna show you guys how to wrap the cork tape properly. We'll talk a bit, we'll talk a little bit about the wind wrap you're going to do it the same but there's a few tips or tricks that i found out and that you shared with me along the way we'll do that right after we come back from this rod recipe here for the surf rod hey 
Hey guys, Chris here. I'm gonna do an on the beach rod recipe for y'all. I've got a surf rod out. We've got a couple down the beach here. I wanna talk about this one here because this is kind of special to me. This is the 1207F-2. So where that comes from is the 120, that is the length. So this is a 10 footer and the dash two means it's a two piece. So the 10 footer, sometimes it's hard to carry as a one piece. That's why this one is in a two piece. So you see, I pulled out of the rod holder here. This is just your standard surf rod holder. This being a 10 footer, I wanted to add a little balance to it. So I added the CRB weighted butt and this is just over an ounce. So it does give you a little bit of balance. You can see there, that's pretty nice. The wind's got me a little, but that really, it's very lightweight, it's very well balanced. I did lengthen the handle here, because most of the time, when you're really rearing back and dumping this spool out to the surf, you want a little bit longer handle than you would on a regular inshore rod or a bass rod. What I did, this is the cork tape. So I didn't want a large OD handle here, because I never really touched this section of the rod. I can grab onto the weighted butt, I can turn it around, and I can really throw it to the horizon with this rod. Cork tape, easy to hang on to, very slim. It's just the outer diameter of the rod blank. It just wraps right around it, and it actually transitions up here to this size 18 seat. This is out of the CRV products. It's the all aluminum one. I use it as a spinning seat. It's designed for that. You see this little cradle in the back. It's very ergonomic. It fits in your hand just perfect. This runs down to a size 5,000 reel. It's great for this rod. I'm using that vertical jigging grip. This is a seven inch grip. I use this a lot. Reason being is I like the slimmer profile. It has a little bit of taper here, right where you grab it when you fight that fish. And then I did kind of go out on a limb here and I did some cross wraps. It really looks cool. I wanted something that would pop that you could see on the beach. This is the color code from Pro Wrap is 619 there. That's the purple. And then of course, I added a little bit of purple, metallic and a little silver metallic, just to give it a kind of a pop. I carried that Pro Wrap, both metallic and color fast out here. And I'm using the MD series LZR guides. The reason being is I know that'll handle braid, monofilament. It doesn't matter what I throw at this. Very corrosion resistant out here in the elements. So this is the polished frame with the LZR ring. Of course, the polished frame is going to match the CRV butt and the reel seat here. So moving out, I did do three double footed strippers. You can see I've got my ferrule wrap here, two piece. We talked about that a little bit ago. And then of course I ran it out in single foot runners because they're very, very stout and they can pretty much handle anything that this rod can handle. So we're here in Stewart, Florida on the gorgeous beach. And uh, I just really enjoy surf fishing. It's, it's relaxing and uh, you know, you can make you a drink and just wait on a bite. So guys, thanks for joining me for an on the beach rod recipe. We'll see you for the next one. Take care. All right, so that is it. Very cool. What do you think? Awesome. Great info on there. The uh, beach looked beautiful. Dude, I'm telling you, that Stewart and Jensen area is something else for sure. The water was gorgeous. And uh, yeah, we had, we had a ball. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, it's always nice when you can kind of look into something and go, all right, we're going to go do A, B, C. We're going to build this rod specifically for that. It worked out great. Yeah. You know? And here we have it right here. Here we have it. So yeah, you've seen it. There it is. Now, let's talk a little bit about putting this cork tape on. Now, the interesting thing is, it's sold like this, and we're, this is the Surf Grip Tape. Yes. So that's a little more, uh, kind of a, maybe a leathery kind of vibe. Kind of more rigid. It's a, uh, how do I describe it? It's a little more tough, a little yeah. tough on the exterior. It kind of feels like, uh, if anybody's got like a pickup truck that has like a non-skid, like the, yeah, the, the spray-in bed yeah, liner. Yeah, spray-in, spray yeah. That's so. about what that feels like. Um, it's actually pretty good. Cork tape is what we used here. Uh, I believe this one is a sixteenth of an inch thick. Is that right, Jay? Isn't that one, that was the one we used here? So, 
This stuff, though, is sold a couple different ways, right? It's sold in, what, a 50-foot roll? Correct. But you can buy it by the foot. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out if you've got about 17 inches of length here and, you know, you're working with this grip, how do you know how much to buy? So, for all the math whizzes out there, you've got the outer diameter of the blank. And of course, this is in approximates. And you always, I always like to kind of give you a little extra because you never know yep. when you're going to kind of booger it up. This stuff is not overly expensive. So, it allows you to buy less than a 50 footer. And you can kind of get what you need, right? So, what we're going to do is you're going to find Actually, I'm gonna, you want to write this on the board here, guys? So if I can see it while I'm writing, we'll see. So you've got, you've got the butt OD. So and we're, not, we're not doing math tonight. I'm just going to show you. <laughs> so you would have the butt OD like 0.75, right? And then what you do is you're going to multiply that by pi, right? Approximate. Yeah, 3.14. If you want to run that out, please feel free to run that out. We're not going to do that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to multiply that by grip length. I picked up my spelling a little bit because I know you guys were making fun of me last time about, what was it, Chevron and something else? I don't know. <laughs> so it would be grip length, which would be 17 inches. Now. You've got that, and then depending on the feet that you need, you are then going to divide that, and that is going to get by 12. So that is going to give you how many feet you need. I believe that's how we do that. This is kind of, you know, an off the cuff. I think, don't we, ha huh? Round up. And always round up. Good call. Yeah, always round up. Um, that's how we always do it, right? Yeah. Anybody believe, asks us well, how much we need, we always round up. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I would probably add at least two extra feet. I mean, just to be safe, right? Okay. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, sell more, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, the thing is, you know, you are going to have, the good part is, is the largest part of the diameter of the blank is going to be where you start. Now, that blank doesn't really change a whole lot. You know, if we're looking at outer diameter, it's certainly never going to grow on you right? It's always going to taper down. So that'll be a little bit built in. Um, but you'll, uh, so you always want to have a little extra. Absolutely. Because it's, I don't know. And of course we're dry fitting, right? So you never want a situation of, oh, I'd really like to make that handle, you know, an 18 inch handle but I only accounted for 17 inches because I listened to that guy on Mudhole YouTube, you know, live or whatever, and I really needed a little bit longer handle. So yeah. I think that's, that's about where we're at. So that's, that's the math lesson yeah. for tonight. And I think those instructions are on the page yeah. for the cork tape. Right. So in case... Yeah, I didn't just come up with this on a whim. In case uh, so, none yeah. of that made sense. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it, it is there. So. All right. Cool. All right, so... Let's talk a little bit about starting and finishing because I have a little bit of a sort of a cheat on the cork tape. So if you get the cork tape and you've got, you know, this big long section of it, same with the wind tape. This is only, says it's a three foot section. We pulled this out of uh, the sash downstairs. So it is an adhesive backed, right? And it has like a mesh tape. So it doesn't go anywhere. I'm telling you, it, it does not go anywhere. So it's mesh tape. It's a really, it's very, very tacky. I mean, you can see that's, that's pretty tacky. So it's very tacky and it's not going to go anywhere. Now you can adjust, and this is sort of where it comes in on how much you need because depending at depending on the angle that you want to attack this at 
you know, you could use a little more, a little less. There's just a little bit, you know, just a little bit of, you know, variation in there. So we'll get it started. But what you want to do is, if you're going to use this guy, notice, oh, I started too far up the rod blank, right? So always dry fit this and make a mark, right? And what I do is I always make sure that you make a full revolution because what you don't want to have happen is pull this number and you have a very, very sharp, you know, obviously you're going to have to, you're going to have to wrap this around and you're going to have to meet the other side, right? And it, it does move a little. You can work it kind of flexible, right? So you can kind of start to get it. What you don't want to have happen, though, is here's where we started, right? This blank just so happens to fit over this. But then you get this, OK? So what you want to do is sometimes you need to start off the blank, OK? You need to start up off the blank like this, OK? And again, we're doing this live, so you know, here we go. And I like to, you can run it right up to it and kind of, kind of work it up and down like this and get it right snug to it, okay? And you can hear how sticky it is on my fingers as I, as I work this around, right? So now, really, it just kind of looks like one piece, yeah? So you notice I have this kind of tag end of adhesive that I don't just pull the whole piece off. Because like I said, it's sticky. Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing you need is like little fluffy come around and sniff your shoes and now <laughs> he's got cork tape on the side of his head and you know, we just don't need that kind of thing happening at the house. So we're gonna work that down as we go. So I'm going to cut this off just because that's how it goes, right? Just so it's out of the way. Now, what I do, because you have either the fighting butt, if it fits over, again, it fit over on this one by chance. It, it's not, so please don't take this for it works every time, right? 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah. So yeah. what you've got is this just so happened to slide over, but if it doesn't, you do need to either dry fit this or you're going to need to measure the length here. And then I always you know, kind of give it just a little because you will actually be able to work one of these large hosels up over the edge of this. So then what we do is we can actually take it and lay the razor blade on it, and we can come around and cut it, right? And again, we're doing this live, so you guys don't, if I got a little bit of a wavy cut there. I didn't get that very good. Yep. You can see, that's how durable it is, though, because it didn't want to tear because I didn't get it cut all the way. That's what you would do. Take it and come around. You have that piece cut. If this fits over it, it just will barely fit over it. If that fits over it, great. If it doesn't, use your winding check. Work the winding check up like this and then work it down. Of course, this wouldn't go all the way there. So you need to cut it. You need to cut it down here, right? But because of that webbing on the back, like I showed you, this webbing on the back, it's not all that easy to cut, as you just saw. I went around it, I scored it with a razor blade that was not brand new, and you can see it didn't cut it all the way, but that is how durable this stuff is. So if there's anything to be said for not being able to cut it that easy, 
it's because it's very durable. So that is that. Now, as you work that up the rod blank, you're going to do the exact same thing. Then you've got a mark on the blank, hopefully, of where you dry fit your reel seat. And again, <clears throat> with the part numbers that we showed you, size 18 seat, the cork tape on this blank, from the back of the butt to the back here is 17 inches. It just so happened to, you can see how nice that fit together there. I didn't have to use any transition piece. It just butt right up to it. Now, I knew that coming in because I dry fit all this stuff. This cut needs to be real good because if this is jagged, you're going to see it against that reel seat. So be sure if you're going to make a good cut, make it here. You can kind of cheat on the back a little bit because you got that winding check. But mm -hmm. that right there, that's got to be good. So, yep. If you didn't want it to butt up like that and you wanted a trim piece, just go to a 20. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and then it would overlap it a little bit or you could use a trim piece or if you wanted to use a transition piece. Yeah. So. Very cool. It allows you to, like you said, transition between your, your butt cap, your winding check, and up to that real seat. Yeah. Really, really sharp. Keeps it low profile, slim handle in the butt section. Um, really easy to get in and out of the rod holder, like yeah. we talked before. Just yeah. kind of thought it looked cool, too. Yeah, for know? sure. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the wind wrap as opposed to this. Okay. So let's get, hand me that, hand me that gaff there. back there. Yeah, because I want to show how the gaff and, and yeah, how. Yeah, because you can use this wind tape for. Anything. Anything and everything. We're yeah. not talking just fishing either. We're no. talking, you know, we've used it for GoPro, um, like sticks. Oh, yeah. You know, to mount our GoPros on. Yep. People um, use it on like handlebars or uh, yeah. like a tiller on your outboard, you know, mm -hmm. if you got a little skiff and you use it as a tiller. All right. So we could have easily used cork tape here on the gaff. We didn't. We used the wind tape. Now, some differences. You will see on this wind tape, the edges are designed to overlap a little bit because there is a section of adhesive on the back. You can see that white kind of um, kind of wax tape, sort of. That pulls off and it shows the adhesive backing that's on the back of this wind tape. Now, these little edges you can see where there's no kind of wax paper, um, those are designed to be overlapped. What it does is it kind of adds to the integrity of the overall wind wrap so you're not like picking at a seam, right? But for a little extra security, wind provides you with colored tape. You can see here on the edges. And what that does is that gives you, you know, the area to like lock it down, right? Sorry, Nick, I know I'm, we're playing a little freeze tag here. But so you've got the tape on the ends. And what that does is that just locks it down. So again, you get the wind wrap, this thing. And then I'll show you the, here, I'm going to give you that. Yep. And then I'll show you just the bands of tape. So in the packaging, you will then also get pretty color matched tape. right? So what that does is um, that will give you areas to kind of like lock it down. So uh, the cool, the other cool thing is, I don't know if I have that. Yeah, I do. All right. So in the box, not only does it kind of give you like a, like a touch and feel, what is it, you know, uh, there on the, on the outside, kind of the, the wind scratch and sniff type thing. <laughs> um, what it's got is there's directions inside. So with the directions inside, it will give you... It's a little bit different than I did with the cork tape. So the cork tape, because it's fully adhesive back that it does not overlap, you can wrap it and then cut it. What the wind tape shows you is it will actually, you dry wrap the like first wrap to get kind of the angle that you do. And then you actually, and you look down here as you go down, it will give you, you know, cut it, then you start to wrap, and then you finish the wrap, and then it'll give you the tape to finish it off. Yeah. So those are the those are the directions inside of the wind overwrap.
Um, it gives you measurements on it. Uh, this particular one, it's eight feet, so it's 96 inches. And then of course the, the thickness is a 1.1 millimeter on that. So you get plenty of it. Yep. You get plenty of it. So, uh, and it'll allow you to do a lot of, a lot of cool things. So, yep, that is that. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. Let's maybe do one or two questions and then uh, yep. we got some guides to talk about. We do. We let's do. see, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna actually, let me jump in and do the drone thing. Okay, okay because I talked to Jay before he came out. Perfect. And Jay said, hey, guess what? Let's answer John's, uh, John Abraham's question. Uh, is that something that fits a GoPro drone? Uh, John, it does not. So <clears throat> the drone that we had was the, what was it, DJI? Phantom. The Phantom, I'm sorry. The Phantom. DJI. Oh, the DJI Phantom. All right, so it was the one that carried the most weight, really. I mean, it was like, what, two and a half pounds, 2.2 .2 pounds? Yeah. Yeah. So what we had to figure out was how much lead we're going to use, how heavy the bait's going to be, and then all this extra, you know, drag from the line and all that. So that drone carried the most. So what we also did was we ordered a mechanism. Well, actually, this is the rig that we used to. But we actually ordered a mechanism, this guy here. And it is from Gannett. So it's Gannett bait release for the DJI Phantom 4. Um, the cool thing about this is... It actually, so the legs on the drone, it, it grabs it like this, so that the brace is underneath, they grab it like that, <coughs> excuse me, and then these little O-rings come around and secure it, right? Then, under here, this little ball, it's actually a little tension device that you can set with this red tensioner, right? So that is a spring-loaded, um, that's the release mechanism. So you actually clip in the loop, and I think if I have it here, this thing is still a mess. So we had a loop just like that, and I actually use fluorocarbon for that because it's really, really stiff. You can see how stiff that loop is. So that loop actually would clip in. Well, I don't, it's definitely not set. But so it clips in, and one of two things, so it holds it like that, and then you can either mechanically release it by like putting your hand on the spool and it clips out, or this wire here actually plugs into the drone. Jay, this goes into the lights? So this plugs into your lights. So you can actually turn the lights on and off while you're flying the Phantom. When you turn the lights off, it actually sends the signal to this little control box here, and it actually will articulate the little uh, spring in here, and you can drop it like that. So one of two ways. You can drop it by turning the lights on and off, or if something bad was to happen mid-flight, and before Jay can hit the button, I can actually grab the spool and click it out, and it'll fall you know, if I, you know, if you get like a backlash in the reel or something, and something's getting ready to happen really quick, it'll actually click out. So it's not only a safety mechanism, but it's also just an additional backup way to to kick that bait out of there. So, Pretty and again, cool. we're gonna in that drone video that releases the drone fishing that we're gonna talk about all that stuff, but. To touch on John's question tonight, that's what we did. So we picked a drone based on how much weight, just like we picked the rod based on what we were going to be doing. And uh, that was the bait release mechanism that we bought from Gannett. So, cool. yeah. What you got? What do you think? Let's do, um, we'll do the second giveaway and then move on to guides. Mm -hmm. Save some questions until the end. Let's do it. Cool. All right, second giveaway of the night. We, uh, does it say two winners? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do two winners. Wow. So, <clears throat> right, I know. Again, you're paying for it. So, we're gonna do two winners uh, because we talked about uh, wind wrap and cork tape. Uh, we're gonna, there's two things, so we're gonna give two winners. So, we're gonna allow, uh, you know, two guys or girls to win, and uh, that's how it's gonna be. 
So what do we have? We have Southeastern Outdoors Thompson on YouTube. Okay. So Southeastern Outdoors Thompson on coming out of YouTube. And then we've got Ken Blanchard Jr. Now it says he's coming out of YouTube. I've seen Ken in yeah, Facebook too. For sure. So Ken, you can't hide on YouTube, man. <laughs> we we see you. We see you. So congratulations, Ken. We've seen you on both areas there. I like I like blanching uh, blanching it out. <laughs> I like you branching it out. Uh, watching hopefully in the garage man cave rod builders workshop that you got there at home. Watching on YouTube. So yeah. Southeastern Outdoors Thompson. Is that right? Yeah? Okay. That's on YouTube. And then Ken Blanchard Jr. also on YouTube. You guys get to uh, get to pick. Cool. You want a win over wrap? You want the cork tape? So, perfect. All right. We still got one more giveaway. And that is the, I don't even think we've said it yet, the MHX Surf Rod Kit. That one. Which that is coming one. up. Uh, we got to talk about guides first, though. Yeah, we got to talk about guides. Yeah. Because that is something that... Do, do we maybe get the most rod building questions on guides? Maybe? I think so. Between that and, like, what blank would you use for fill in the blank? Yeah, right? for sure. <clears throat> so, as we talked about kind of in the beginning, um, we use a lot of the same guides. Mm -hmm. We just up the sizes. So yeah. instead of uh, you know a traditional, say uh, inshore spinning rod that might use a you know twenty, right? We're going to use especially double foots. We're going to use a double foot thirty, sometimes even up to a forty. For sure, and I think where this can get a little bit of well, a little confusion is like you said, if you've got your SJ forty two and you've got a size twenty, you're using a guide that is a spinning guide, mm -hmm. right? So it is single foot, it's taller, it looks like a spinning guide. Now what we're doing is we're using guides that are double footers. Yep. And it would be a spin cast. Exactly. Still referred to as spinning guides a lot of the time. Right. It's where the confusion can come in. For sure. Can be used as casting guides, especially in the smaller sizes, 20, yep. 16 down to 12, you know. Oh yeah. But especially when you get up to the size 30 and 40, you'll notice a lot of these guides come in a standard 30 and a low 30. Right. And same for the 40 as well. For sure. And that all depends, um, you know, what size reel you're gonna be using, a couple determining factors in there. Yes. But um, for the most part, a 30 or a 40 is pretty standard when it comes to setting up your surf rod. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, that's gonna be something that, uh, there are spin cast guides, like you said, spinning, mm -hmm. but kind of casting. But then it starts to get more specific. You start to deal with something like this, yep. right? So you get into a microwave style that has a lot of them will give a, and I'm going to kind of rotate these, Nick. Hang on to them, buddy. Let me get kind of a better grip here. So you're going to get a microwave that gives the size of this ring and then the size of the inner ring, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on what you're doing, you could have a guide like this and a guide like this that could sort of be interchangeable. You notice they have a little bit kind of at a different angle, but of course you're also going to get, you know, a different inner as opposed to a different outer. Yep. And for those, just like Evan asked, do microwaves work well on a surf build? They absolutely do. As and long you need as to you, tell us why. Yeah, as long as you get the appropriate microwave guide set, because there are, as you know, there are a lot out there that they developed over the past couple of years. Yep. So the largest one that you showed is a 50 to, I believe, a 30, um, which is called their, uh, actually, Kind of originally so designed for um, yeah, so that's for, a fifty thirty. Cool, designed for uh, cart fishing along with surf fishing as well. Right, right. So that's a fifty uh, large ring to a thirty inner ring. Right, yep. um, very common to see these on surf rods across the board, um, and you can also notice the height on this guy. I mean, it is you know not only is the ring a fifty a size fifty, which is very large, right. the height as well, because mm -hmm. we are using size. 
5,000, 6,000, upwards of... Up. Yeah, eight. I mean, you know, it is, is, as high as the spinning reels will go in size. Exactly. And uh, that height allows it to get off of the blank um, and matches up with the height of the distance off of the blank that your spinning reel is, mm -hmm. right? Because they're all different. They are all different, of course, depending on the size. And uh, brands, too, which you showed earlier. Yep. So we also have, um, which you showed, the, uh, the smaller version of that, which oh, is yeah. called the Microwave 30. Um, and I believe that goes to uh, 16? I don't know. Kind I didn't know like if that. Like 12 or an 8 or it something. It could be. It could be smaller. Oh, it I probably like says calendar. on there. Sorry for yeah. getting that one wrong. But um, in any case, the, uh, the Microwave 30, also great for, you know, some of your, your smaller or shorter uh, surf builds. Yep. Also great for like um, a tarpon rod, a big snook rod. Um, you know, these serve multiple purposes. Yep. And also the guys you just picked up, the uh, ever famous Fuji K-series guides. Um, this is what you were saying earlier about, so we're looking at identical ring sizes, but look at the height. Yep. Those are 40s? Those are 40s. Yeah. And as you can see, the, um, you know, the frame as well and the K-series guides um, are known for being tangle-free, right? So yes. they are... I guess you could say slanted a little bit forward yep. towards the tip. Um, some guys even turn these guides around, sure. backwards, depending on the look you're going for. Um, so, and, you know, like we said, the the low versus the um, not necessarily called a high frame, but a standard frame, yep. right? They're not necessarily high frames. And it will be designated, and I'll show you on the board in a minute of yep. how some of this stuff is written because it will be. Well, is that a low, is that a high, is that, you know, whatever. And then, of course, the ones that I use are the LZRs. Yep. So <clears throat> what I do is I'm using, on this one in particular, we've got standard LZR. This is actually gun smoke. That was polished. Yep. So stainless steel frame, perfect in salt water. The LZR ring, you can see how thin that ring actually is. It's incredible with all, it doesn't matter if you're using monofilament, braid, any of the super line stuff. And then of course, I've got a 30 to a 20, and I'm gonna show you why I chose that, how I chose that here in a second. And then, you know, how do you run your guide train out is, is pretty much where all this is gonna come from. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if, I would say one of the most underutilized section of our website that might have taken the most work by every employee here collectively is the resources tab. Yep. So anybody that's been over to mudhole.com, if you look, there is a tab that is titled resources. And the reason for that is we have specifications for blanks. If somebody says, hey, I have this model number of an MHX blank, and I want to put a real seat 12 inches from the butt, how big is it? Yeah. We've got that in there. We've got specs and dimensions for real seats and winding checks. We've got lengths and butt ODs. We also have guide spacing. Because like you said, there's an LZR style. There's a regular spinning style. Uh, there's micro guide spacing. There's all different kinds of stuff, and we have all that listed there. So. But I want to say those are suggestions. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say those are suggestions is because when you really start dialing this stuff in, we couldn't give you spacing for every single reel. You know, we can't say, all right, so if you're going to use the surf rod, the 1207-2 from MHX, and you're going to use a 5000 Shimano, this is the spacing. If you're going to use a 4500 BG, this is the spacing. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through a little bit, kind of on the whiteboard. We're going to talk about it on how to maybe go about this whole thing. So, Jay, get us a little scroll up there in that center box, and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of we're going to kind of walk through that. So, <clears throat> this being uh, the rear section. So I'm actually going to pull the line out from this clip, and we're going to talk about a little bit about what we're doing here and hopefully you can see some of this so and again you can do this 
while dry fitting. You don't have to wait until everything is locked up. Actually, I'm going to spin this around so you all can see it. So you can do this one of two ways. I'm going to show you kind of the shorthanded version because we already have the line on the spool and the reels here and everything. Technically, what you want to do is you want to remove the spool off. The reason you want to do that is because you want to make sure you're taking the line off of the center where the axis where this thing spins around, right? But what you can also do is you can also turn it exactly 90 degrees so you're right there in the middle. Give or take a little bit. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run this out. So kind of, let me give you the end here. And then kind of work that through the guide. So this has to be here. And then Hunter's going to work that out, right? So just pull that, just pull it tight, right? So if you notice what we want, and if we had the other section out here, the line coming off of this, the face of this spool, is at an angle. You don't always know what that angle is going to be unless you have the reel. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to match this angle and run it through the guide in the center or in like the lower one third. Some of the like specifications and some of the wording says you want it all the way in the bottom here. I don't like it perfectly in the bottom, but you can see this is coming through the middle or like kind of right there on the edge of the bottom one third of that guide. All right. And then if we had the other ones out there, you'll see this one kind of catches in the same. It'll be up a little and then <clears throat> on the way out. Right. So for me, you'll see a lot of the Fuji stuff, whether it is in a regular spinning with single foot spinning guides or in this spin cast kind of version or in an American Tackle microwave. Those first three guides, if I can get this thing under here while I'm talking. All right. The first three guides are the deal. Yep. Once you get out after that, I mean, you can do just run it out spacing. You can kind of make it aesthetically pleasing. Each guide gets a little bit closer together and then run it all the way out, right? Yep, absolutely. Yep. And so what, what I would recommend <clears throat> starting with, so the microwave guides, they actually provide spacing. Again, it's, it's recommended. Is, is yep. there no spacing in there? No, no, there is. I just... It might have fell out, but yep. in any case, um, all right, they come go. with suggested, especially for the first three um, butt guides, starting from the butt. It was in the top of the... Gotcha, perfect. I had to pull it apart. So, comes with suggested spacing, um, depending on the length of your rod, right? Fuji has a very similar um, thing. They actually have a software. Yes. I think it's called the GPS software, guide okay. placement software. Okay. That um, you can plug in, and this doesn't go for just surf rods. This goes for anything across everything. the board. You can plug in, I believe you can plug in what reel you plan on using. Some of them, so on that software, and that's over at um, anglersresource.net. Yeah. So anglersresource.net is where the, that's kind of their resources for Fuji, just like we have our resources. Right. So what you'll do is you'll run over there. And yes, they do have some reels. You know, they have probably like a 2500 Stratic. Yes. Right. But they also have measurements of reels. So what they will do is you can measure like how wide the spool is, how far the spool is from the blank, because what they want is they want the angle of a kind of, I don't really know what that's called. It might be like an approach angle type thing, right? So that this reel has an angle where it angles back to the blank and at some point if you drew a straight line out of this reel it's going to cross the blank somewhere mm -hmm. where that crosses you're going to be out there at what they call a choke guide most of the time they call a choke guide which is your third or fourth one way out there right so you're saying the measurement to do a measurement here one at the foot and one back here at the back that will kind of give you the angle and then of course sometimes they give you the spool mm -hmm. They have all of that there, and then what will happen is an Excel chart on their website will just populate. And it'll say, you know, oh, you need a 40 like this. Or no, you need the 40 low. And then it'll say 40 low, 20, 16, 
yada, 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 whatever. Yep, exactly. So. Very helpful. Yep. So what I was showing, I'm going to show you here on the board. I have a little piece for those that are more of a, I don't know, what is that, a visual learner maybe? Yep, visual learners. All right. So I tried to use a straight edge and whatever this time. I was How's hoping that? you were going to draw that real time. You cheated a little bit. Come on, on now. Come on. I, well, you know, last time it was kind of, <laughs> it was a little wavy or something, you know. The board's not even, so that's not the case. All right, so what we're looking at here is that's your rod blank, okay? There's your reel. That blue line is the center coming off, and it's giving you, you know, your first, your second, and your third guide there. So just as I showed a minute ago, here on the back, if you're looking at <clears throat> an American Tackle microwave, it will give you stripper transition running guide out. And this one says 24 and 3 quarters, 36 and a quarter, 46 and a quarter. That will give you about what you, about what you need there. To hone it in a little bit tighter is because American Tackle, just like you know us, we don't know what reel you're using. So then what you'll do is when you've got your three guides out here, you'll have your reel and then you'll want to pull your line out and just wherever it wants to intersect, you can tape it off there, just make sure it comes through. And then when you're using your guide tubing or your microband guide tubing from CRB, you can slide these guides, this one in a little, that one out a little, whatever. Because we do, in a sense, we want to shoot right through the center of each one of those guides. And then, of course, it'll shoot right through there. And then you'll have, you know, a little choke guide out here. And then all the way out, no, we can't provide, you know, spacing for every single different, you know, thing. So technically, let's say you've got spacing for a 10-footer, but then you really have a 13-footer and you're kind of like, well... What do we do? You know, from there on out, I would just use the static deflection. So what you're going to do is you'd put the rod together, put them all out. Obviously, if you're running out of guides when you get out and you know you're going to need a couple extras, just continue that spacing on out. And even you can be as rudimentary as, you know, follow the spacing all the way out. And then when you get to that last guide, whatever the spacing on that last guide said, so let's say, you know, if it's, you know, if this is a 13-footer, so then your last guide's going to be like way back here, right? So whatever the distance is from the last guide to the one before it, measure that. What are you thinking? Probably three and an eighth? Sure. Four, you know? So if this is three and an eighth, what I would do is you could just continue that out, granted you're probably going to then be too many guides. But that'll get you started. So don't panic if this is 10 feet here and you got three more feet to go. I would come back a couple guides and maybe like the distance between, you know, these two are five inches and then maybe this one is like four and three eighths. I would then maybe push this one out, you know, go then four and three eighths, four and three eighths, four, three and an eight, you know, whatever. Yep. And then just kind of continue that, you know, shortening of the length in between them, and you'll be just fine. Because then you can always fall back on your static deflection. Yep. And you will notice a lot of, um, a lot of spacing that's provided, whether it be MHX, microwave, right? They will actually, for instance, microwave, they give you the first three mm -hmm. from the butt, and then, more than likely, they're going to give you um, inches from the tip. Yes. So you're going to place That's your first point. three from the butt, which you're, you're kind of starting in the beginning, right? And then you start working backwards from the tip. Sure. And then you're going to meet in the middle. Now, he, you might have a guide that's, you know, spaced two inches, you know, apart or an inch yeah. apart from each other. Right. That's where you have to go in and, and um, you know, make your own little adjustments depending on what rod you have. For but, sure. Yeah, don't panic. Like. Yeah. Trust me, you guys are more than well, you know, equipped to, to adjust spacing. And then, of course, if you, even if you don't have a static deflection chart or whatever, you can 
tie the rod off to a door handle and pull on it. You know, you can put a milk jug and, and put it in your spine finder. If you don't have a spine finder, stick it in the couch and, you know, give it some sort of curve with a reel in it if you feel like things are just haywire, you know, but kind of, you know, if you, if you need to cheat and you've got the first three guides like that, trust me, you can lay it out on the counter and just go, okay, well that one, there's the first three and then that one's about seven inches apart. I'm going to put this one six and a half, six, five and a half, you know, exactly. you can, you can run it out. Now, granted, you don't want like the last guide, you know, one and a half inches from the tip, but then just move everything down a little or take a guide out. Mm -hmm. Then put all the guides on with your guide tubing and then use your static deflection. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me. I think, uh, what, what was the quote? We're, we're not building nuclear weapons here. We're just, we're just building custom fishing rods. So trust me, you're gonna be, you're gonna be just fine. Between our resources, American Tackle's resources, Angler's resource, Fuji's resources, or 11,000 members in the Mudhole Live Rod exactly. Workshop. Workshop. Absolutely. We're going to get you through it. Yep. No problem. For sure. No problem. So, sweet. I think that's, I think that's about as guide heavy as we want to get until we're going to do the guide to guides show yeah. later in the year. Yeah. So. And, you know, static deflection is one of those things where you need to know how to do it. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Put a little practice in. Um, it is so simple. Don't overcomplicate it. It's one of those things where if it looks good, it's probably right. It might take a little practice to get there, but you can make it happen. Yep. Cool. All right, so I think we've got some questions, and I don't think we have done the rapid fire Q&A session. And everybody complains that I'm long-winded. We know that this. <laughs> so I think that this is why they came up with, right, Jay? This is why you came up with rapid fire to shut me up. It's because of you. Because of me. Yeah. Hey, it is what it is, right? So I just want to make sure everybody knows the deal at home. All right, so you get 30 seconds of question. I'm going to let you go first. Are you going to let me go first? Yeah. Um, let me find one here. Uh, okay, Cody, when building a two piece rod, do you still need to find the spine? Yes, absolutely. You can um, spine each one individually or do the straightest axis of both, either one. Spine or straightest axis. There's a big debate there. Not getting into it. I was going to say, Whew. we ain't got all nope. that time. 30 seconds only. All right. Uh, Pierce Ledette's got a question. Should you base the rod on the real size or type of fishing? Pierce, I'm always going to do a little bit of mix, right? So I want to be sure when I'm sizing the guides and all of that, I'm going to base that on the reel. But I also need to know what I'm going to be doing with that rod because am I going to be running... 10 pound braid or I'm going to be running 40 pound braid. So uh, that's kind of one of those multi-step questions. It's a little bit of both, but I definitely consider both when I'm into it. All right. Cool. Uh, Adam, what blank would you suggest for beach shark fishing? More of a question for you. I was going to say, uh, wow, I can't I think, believe you went there. I, I think you, you built one of those, right? Uh-huh, I did. Uh, two, we used a prototype out of the X-Fighter, which really just get the heaviest thing you can get, but still have a little bit of length. The overall length of that X fighter that we built was over seven feet because when we put it in the rod holder, we still wanted it above the waves, so it wasn't like pulling on it too much. Or if you want a spinning rod that's not too crazy, we use the B1550 with 40 pound braid on this BG4500. Jacob Powell, is an under wrap important for these uh, surf rod guides? I would say not as important as if you're building like a heavy offshore rod. As uh, you know, on these right here that you built, there's no under wraps. Um, you can certainly add them if you want to, but it's not necessary. Cool. Uh, Robert Walker, looks like an awesome catfish setup to me. A hey, Chris. <laughs> no, and I award you no points. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Next. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. Uh, hide behind Facebook. Come David, uh, would it be okay to marble where you have the cork wrap? Uh, sure. I don't. Yeah, definitely could. You could easily shorten this full section of uh, of cork tape and add a little marble section there if you wanted to. Um, 
Keep in mind though, that section is going in and out of a rod a tube or whatever it may be. So could get your finish could get scuffed up. So just be aware of that. Yep. Jacob, uh, is an underwrap important for these surf rod guides? Honestly, it's not. Just answered that. Did you? Yeah. Underwrap? I thought you just said the marble one. No, I did. I did the underwrap. Whew. I gotta keep up. <laughs> All right, uh, Andrew, how does the discs hold up in the salt water? Do they corrode? Uh, they don't. They are, uh, they have like a powder coating on them and they're really, really tough. So no, they do, they do a good job of, uh, of kind of maintaining and not corroding and doing all that. Uh, so that's a good option in salt water. That's cool. fine. We scroll down real quick. Yeah. Or delete the questions that we already answered. <laughs> Uh, Christopher, what is the, whoa, whoa, where to go? What is the shortest you would use while using a lure? Um, shortest rod, maybe? What do you mean? Yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, for any surf rod, I probably wouldn't go any less than eight and a half, eight. Yeah. Um, you know, just because you're, you want to get distance off your cast more than likely. Mm -hmm. so. Some of those eight footers like the flipping stick or yeah. the, uh, one of the crankbait models, the one that's the, uh, 968, CB 968, that can handle a lot. But again, that's also an eight footer. If you get any shorter than that, you're gonna be, you're gonna be tough. Yeah. Um, Brian S, what size stripper guide for a Daiwa BG in the 4,500 to 5,000? Uh, Brian, depending on which one you go with, guide wise, uh, we are using typically a 40 in the LZR, just because the spool face is a little bit kind of bigger. Um, if you're casting it, for sure. If you're just trolling it, you can probably get away, you know, you can cheat a little bit. Um, and also the same goes for the Fujis. I like the 40 for the BG because that face, that's, that's pretty big. So, and it's, it's also, you run like 40 pound braid on that, sometimes 50. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Alvin, can you put that tape on a bass rod? Um, so, cork tape or wind tape? You could honestly, yeah, you could do either one. Uh, I'd probably go with a wind tape over the cork tape. Yep. Cork tape's really kind of a special thing just for surf rods. You could use it for any rods you like, mm -hmm. but um, I'd probably offer the wind tape if you use either or. Yep, for sure. Uh, Mark, uh, what do you prefer, silicone or metal winding checks? Mark, I've used both. I would go with metal though. I, I like the metal winding checks. You just have to be aware that you're using the resources page. You're making sure you're buying, other, buying the right winding check. If you get caught in the middle a little bit, sometimes you got to monkey with it a little bit. Um, you know, they, they are aluminum, so you really don't have to worry about like corrosion with the, with the metal winding checks. I mean, you still have to rinse them off and stuff, but you know, they, they are aluminum, so they are nice. Um, but if maybe you don't rinse your stuff off as much, go with the silicone or the, and you still want that color. So, yeah. yep. Uh, last one, Timothy, odd question. Would you ever use roller guides on a surf rod uh, for either a stripper guide or the tip top? A um, little overkill, I would say, to use a roller guide on a surf rod. I could see maybe the tip, if anything, but not necessary. I was going to say, we don't have the shark rod in here. Nope. Uh, to add to that, the only time that we use the rollers is because we had a height issue. Yeah. So I don't like the turbo guides that we used on the shark rod weren't tall enough and we were using a 50 wide. So the 50 wide's height was so tall that we would have to have put the, the first turbo guide like halfway out the rod that it was just gonna be silly. So we used a size 47 roller. So that gave us the height and then we went roller turbo and then turbos out and then we did use a roller top just because of the sharp angles. You know, that rod was vertical on the beach and then, you know, the line's over. And then of course you're standing there, you're fighting a fish and you have some sharp angles. Using, whether you're using heavy braid or 60 pound big game like we were, the roller, the roller top's nicer. So. Cool. Cool. There we go. Rapid Q and A over. <laughs> All right. Take, take a breath. Sweet. Now, for everybody that's involved in the mud hole live Rod Builders Workshop. If you're not, you know, you've heard it, you're missing out. Now you're really gonna be missing out because we're doing the photo contest. We've talked about this before. It's live, it's hot, it's gonna run until December 15th, 
okay? You got to get your stuff in. First place, $250 gift card. Second place, $150. Third place, $100 gift card. You got a hashtag though. Hashtag build the number two and win. So build to win. You've got to be a member of the Rod Builders Workshop and those members are going to vote who's going to be the winner. So, you know, we're, we're not really going to have a whole lot to do with it. We're just bringing the community closer together and giving away some stuff. It's going to be a situation that we're going to do this. We're going to have different themes. The current theme is you got to build on an MHX or a CRB. That's it though. You can do MHX saltwater, an ice rod blank, a surf rod blank. You can do a CRB color series. It doesn't matter. It just has to be an MHX or a CRB blank and go crazy with it. Yeah. So you got any time between now and December 15th. What we're going to do is we'll compile all the entries. We'll get it all together. We'll get the voting ready. And then I want to say just after the holidays, we'll announce the winner there. So coming into 2021, that'll be something to look forward to because somebody's going to win gift certificates of 250, 150, or 100. And that, that'll, that'll kick your 2021 off just right. Yep. So um, yeah, that's, that's it. Now, another little perk is the winning photos are going to be featured in catalog that go out to tons and tons and tons of people. I want to say, I think we print 170,000 catalogs. So the main catalog, right. 170,000. So you'll be in 170,000 of those. Um, flyers. Probably going to be in flyers. Potential flyers. So sure. we, we do 50 to 100,000 flyers each core, or not uh, each season. So we do, you know, we got the catalog, then we got a flyer in spring, summer, then we got a flyer in fall, winter. Um, and of course, social media and more, right? Yeah, for sure. We'll probably, you know, give you a shout out on the show. And uh, yeah, so anyway, hashtag build to win theme photo contest at the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop. Yep. There There's 11,000 people in there. There's going to be some cool stuff. For sure. Awesome. All right. I think we just have the giveaway left. Is that right? That's it. Yeah. Giveaway and uh, yeah. Can you scroll down on that middle section just to be sure we haven't missed anything. Cool. Just wanted to make sure. All right. Grand prize giveaway. This is the MHX Surf Rod Kit, mm -hmm. which we're going to compile and piece together for you. Right? You saw it. You yeah, saw the right. rod recipe. Part right. numbers are there. All of it. Right? The winner, Daniel. Martin. Sweet. From Facebook. Coming out of Facebook. Cool. Congratulations, Daniel. All right, so the first giveaway tonight was the weighted fighting butt and swag pack with Zach Bailey. We had the two winners for the court tape and the win. Both of those come out of YouTube, uh, Southeastern Outdoors Thompson and Ken Blanchard. And then, of course, the kit you just heard, the big winner of the evening, Daniel Martin. So. Daniel, if you didn't catch the rod recipe, that's the one. That's the one. Cool. So, it's, it, I'm a fan. I wasn't a big surf guy before, but I think it was kind of one of those like, all right, this is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. So we had a ball. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I can't, I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you that surf rod would have gone the longest. <laughs> um, again, right over that mud hole lies. Rod Builders Workshop, we got the photo giveaway, Q&A, helping people out. It's, it's cool. Now remember, you know, coming into the holiday season, there's going to be some cool photos coming up, some cool builds. Um, you know, it's, it's just going to be awesome. So, yep. A lot for, of cool new stuff on the horizon. We got some uh, upcoming stuff in the works. Oh, yeah. Can't say much. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Some the next, cool products. The next month or so should be pretty cool. It'll be great. Um, and, of course, happy Halloween. Hope everyone enjoys it. That's it. And uh, Spooky. for the Spooky. next show, it looks like we're doing rod repair. So I'm going to get the welding torch and the cutters and stuff out. That is just, you know, going into the holiday season, you're probably going to have to do some rod repair because you've been fishing all spring and summer and fall. So we're going to walk you through cutting handles, cutting guides, uh, redoing reel seats. We're going to be drilling holes. We're going to be cutting blanks. We're going to be doing, you know, pretty cool stuff. Awesome. So that'll be the next one. So, all right, we had... Uh, we had 
Hoffma and Guffy and Taylor. We got a new guy in the group, Jason Green. He's killing it so far. We're loving him. He's in the war room with the guys tonight. Of course, uh, Sween was helping us out. Old Steven. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. And uh, Jay and Nick on the ones and twos, as always. Hunter, my left hand man. I'm Chris Adams, guys. Thanks again so much for joining us for Spooky Surf Builds for Mud Hole Live. We'll see you all next time. See you next time. Bye.